This is the solution for Chapter 4, Topic 5, Working with Distributed Loads. What we're going to try to do is replace this distributed load system with one force acting at one position that will give us an equivalent moment about point A. So we are given the loading system as shown, and we're asked to find the equivalent force and its position from point A. So we're going to take a moment about point A and look to see what that moment is. Now our mathematical definition for finding the resultant force is to integrate that distributed load area and to find the position for the one force that we're going to replace the system with, we would again use an integration. In this chapter we're going to use very simple shapes, just a triangle and a rectangle, which means we're going to hold this integration definition for later. So for us currently to find our force, we're going to break this up into a rectangle and to find the area of that rectangle, we're going to take base times height, and that should give us what the net force is for the rectangle, excuse me, triangle. And then for the rectangle, we'll again take base times height, and our third force, in fact, is already given to us. So let's do force one, which is the um, triangle there. One half base times height, one half base of three, and height would be 2.5 to 0.5, or two kilonewtons per meter. We multiply that out and we see that the net force for that triangle is 3 kilonewtons. For the rectangle, we will take base times height, and our base is 3 meters, our height is 0.5 kilonewtons per meter, so 1.5 kilonewtons downward, and then again, force 3 is given. So we've replaced this now with three forces, and if we determine what our net force is, we see that this distributed load plus individual force gives us a net force of 6 kilonewtons downward. The question now becomes where would we put this resultant force? So here's the three forces we found. The force for the triangle, replacing that distributed load. The force for the rectangle, replacing that distributed load. And the force 3. And the reason we're taking simple shapes is we know the centroid of a triangle is located one-third from the largest um, side. So since the base of this is 3 meters, we can locate that force one meter from the side. For the recto uh, rectangle, the centroid is in the center, so 1.5 meters from point A, and force three was given to us as uh, four meters from point A. So now let's determine what the moment is from these three forces. And of course, we always use counterclockwise as positive. If we hold our finger here at point A and look at these forces, all of these forces are going to make us go clockwise or negative. So negative force 1 and the distance to the pivot point is 1 meter. Negative force 2 and the distance to the pivot point is 1.5 meters. And force 3 is 4 meters away. So putting in what we had for force 1, force 2, force 3, we can see that the net moment is negative, and the negative tells us clockwise, 11.25 kilonewtons per meter. So we've got a resultant force. We know what the moment is about point A. If we're changing this to a scalar and we're asking where is that re resultant force to cause this moment, we can solve for the location of this resultant force. Um, the moment about point A would be the resultant force times the lever arm or the position X. So solving for what X is, we would take the moment over the resultant force and see that we would put this resultant force 1.88 meters from point A to give us that moment. So we've taken this system of forces, reduced it down to one resultant force, and we're asked where that one resultant force would need to act to give us the same moment. That resultant force would need to act 1.88 meters from point A. And we've now answered our question. So for simple geometric shapes, we can do triangles, rectangles, find the net force, and then use a moment to determine where that net force would act.